Welcome to day 446. We've had a week off. I have. He hasn't. Um, we're standing outside the front of the house. With two elbows in my hand. You're about to see why they're in my hand and not in the house. But anyway, what we actually had was water coming into my daughter's bedroom from the master bathroom. Um, naturally, you assume it's the sink or the toilet or the shower. So we isolated both, still kept coming, turned all the mains off, um, still kept coming. So that then told us there's another flow of water somewhere else. However, it seemed to be a cold water leak and there's no storage water anywhere in the house apart from on the mains. So um, we got a guy out called Mark, Mark Thorne, thank you very much. He dealt with this in my absence because I wasn't around by the way, my wife was here, bless her. Um, and what he's actually done is he's actually put um, a pressurized, I think he put about 120 bar through the um, hot water system um, to find out where the leak was and where the water sensor um, he's found where the leak was. Let me show you very quick. So, on the front of the house, we now have a letterbox. So behind there, basically what happened was, as you can see on the wall, we could see where the damp patches were coming through. So there's a mark here, there's a mark here. Um, but what Mark did was actually, when he pressurized the system, he put a, a water sensor on here where he could, he, could, um, he could detect sound. And the sound came from around about here. So um, he started lower and it landed up being about here was that in the wall on the hot water system. So number one, in a wall, it's not very good to use plastic anyway. But what you certainly don't do if you can help it is to have a join in a wall, a block wall. Ideally, you wanna try and drive from the base of where the, I mean here for argument's sake, the slab is here. So we've got an eight inch slab just underneath these window frames going all the way along. So you have no choice but to put these pipes through. But personally, I think what they should be doing is putting sleeves, two inch sleeves, so two inch gutter in the, in the actual concrete itself. So you can actually put these straight through. So then what you can do is after the actual block has been poured and the block walls go up, then you can feed a long pipe all the way down to the base and you can elbow it out into the basement. And if there's, any, if there's anything wrong with it, you can cut the, the actual, the hit the, the elbow off, dig a little bit up the top, and then you can pull the whole pipe out and put a whole new pipe back through. But for some unknown reason, three quarter inch pipe work gets put into the concrete slab and then you have no choice but to come down and join onto that pipe. But worst case scenario, you have one join and you take that length all the way up through the top. That's how you should do it. But obviously they have to try and connect as the blocks are going up. So it's a bit of a catch-22. You can't have 15-foot pipes up in the air with no support as you're blocking over them, obviously. So it's a, it's a catch-22. And obviously, when this, this happens, it causes absolute devastation. So anyway, long story short, we found that in here, there's a, there's a crack in that corner. I don't know if you can see it on the camera. But basically, that's what's happening. The water was just peeing straight out at an angle like that into the wall, coming down. All of this got soaked. And it found its way all the way down into the shower. Behind here is the shower wall, the main bathroom. So it came down behind the shower. It did find its way out here into the shower floor and down the drain, which was great. But it also found its way behind here, straight into that bedroom and completely wrecked all of the, uh, the boards in there, which I'm gonna show you in a second. So this man's been busy, bless him. Up here, we now have a mains hot water stopcock to the actual um, two solar tanks we have, which for some unknown reason, the fitters that fitted it didn't put a stopcock up there. So we've got a cold water stopcock, which stops the water coming up to them, but there's nothing to actually stop the hot water coming down the wall, which is absolutely crazy. So Mark has actually cut the pipes up here, put a stopcock in there, and when he put that in, the water finally stopped leaking here. So it's caused us quite a bit of devastation. So Sherman, bless him in my absence, has obviously worked with him to cut this out. Um, he's now made that a little bit sharper. We've got the mortar back in there. Um, and now we need to try and work out how to best mix the white concrete mortar with the limestone to try and make sure we can try and match it so it doesn't look an absolute dog's dinner. So I'm not too sure we're gonna be able to do that. So it looks like we might have an off-colored, either a brighter white or a darker cream letterbox stuck on the front of the house, which is gonna be absolutely awful. But then again, saying that, the workmanship they put on here in the first place wasn't exactly uh, a masterpiece, was it? So. At some stage, it looks like we might have to grin and bear having this all plastered completely in concrete and then paint it all white so we can actually get a decent surface on it. As you can see, the join they put all the way down the house here. They did this piece first, then came did down and did the last part down here and it just looks awful. And we also need to get some finishes on here as well. So that's one of the things we're going to be doing. So anyway, I'm going to take you in in a second and show you in there. 
um, but also we're going to get the mortar in there so I'll show what that looks like in a second. Okay so this is where the damage came through so we actually saw it coming through underneath all of the edges it's all been ripped off unfortunately it's affected out here unfortunately it's affected in here so this is where we saw the water coming through we came, saw it coming through here so we naturally assumed it was the uh, the toilet system lids them all. So we turned that off, um, dried it out in there, yet it still kept coming through. So we started seeing it coming through here. And um, a little bit later, we saw it coming out of this corner here. So it was making its way out here. So that then made me believe that it's something behind here. So we naturally thought it could be the shower. So that's why we actually unfortunately damaged in here. We had to get the back off in order to see if it was coming from these. So obviously you got the cold water and the hot water going to the shower here. But as you can see, it was finding its way through this corner. So we started assuming, never assume, we started assuming that these wooden things drilled into the wall might have hit one of the pipes in here because we have, we have two hot and colds coming up, elbow in this way, in the floor, coming up along the floor, up for the toilet, along here, up for the sink. Uh, and so was it the actual, we naturally started thinking it might have been this, where these had nails fired into them, into the floor. Has it hit one of them? Which is another potential. Um, we did have water in here, in this little piece here. So we thought it might've been that one. So we got them all cut out and there's nothing there at all. Um, so then it was literally a process of elimination through the, along here, but obviously can't get to down here because behind here is the, is the shower and it's all tiled. So anyway, we obviously started finding out whether it's a hot or cold issue. Um, and I thought it was cold in all fairness. Um, but it, uh, it landed up being a hot issue. So plaster balls have been removed from here, plaster balls have been removed from here. So we're now gonna have to try and bash this flat and try and get another piece of plaster board in there. These have all been um, removed because all the skirting's blue because um, they were the MDF ones. So they're obviously blue as well. And this one's done as well, look, as you can see. So um, yeah, if you're gonna use MDF for skirting boards here, you have to use moisture resistant, which at the time they didn't have. Um, I just assumed, never assume but I assumed that the uh, MDF skirting boards, so the MDF boards here were as good as the English ones and they're, they're not. As soon as they see water, they puff out like a, a muscle man. So we've got a re-upholster re in here with the insulation, get that reboarded, but that's gonna be done during the week. It's not gonna be done now. And then we've obviously got to then replace all the skirting here. The water ran through and landed up going into here as well. So these all blue, um, these all blue. This blue, even overnight, came through into this bedroom and came through here as well. So that's had to be replaced. So we're gonna to have to replace all the skirtings in here, all the skirtings out here, all the skirtings next door, um, and all the skirtings along here as well. So that one was actually um, a, a plastic one in the first place. So plastic actually comes out quite nice, actually. As you can see here, once it's actually cut and put on and painted all right, it looks okay. So again, anyone that wants to use um, skirting boards here, I would potentially either use moisture resistant, which is about 170 a sheet, and obviously you'll get about six inch, six inch pieces out of a sheet, or plastic. Plastic's good, you know, it's not gonna rot, no termite issues, and no dampness issues. And what we've done, we've gone around and just removed the plasterboard now about an inch up, so if it does happen again, at least the plasterboard and the wall doesn't get soaking wet. So that's um, gonna be a week's job, as in during the week. So um, these are woods, it looks like they're okay. They've not absorbed any water, which is good. It looks a little bit wide there, but I'm not too sure if that's just where it's cracked. But anyway, as everybody knows my luck, welcome to my world. And it had to happen, obviously, when I'm not here. Obviously, it couldn't happen when I'm here, so I can deal with it. Of course not. This is the other thing that's happened once I've been away. We've actually had the windows delivered. So this one here is uh, Mr. Bifold. So this one is the three leaf bifold. This one is the two foot window for um, the cottage bathroom. And then this bloody monster is the eight foot by six foot window for the hallway. Massive, massive overkill in, 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 in um, what do they call it? Well, it's boxing obviously, but they don't, they don't, they won't ship windows insured unless they're completely protected. So for some unknown reason, they've literally gone massively over the top. It's just, I don't understand it. I really don't. So anyway, I now have, these were 2,000 pounds just to have made. So the windows are landed up being in the most prestigious carcasses, stroke coffins I've ever seen. So now we've got the hammer and the uh, crowbars ready. And we know we're gonna have to break into all of them because all of them are hammered nailed shut obviously so 
So we're going to start on um, trying to get the bifold in this morning. That's what we're going to try and do. That's that's the first attempt. Uh, and then from that attempt, we can uh, move on to the next one. But I would say it's going to be bifold first because we need a whole day for that. And I would assume, I don't know, assume obviously, I would say probably the, the, the eight by six bit of glass is in that one. It says glass written on it. And I would say on here, they've put all the actual frames and everything in here, I would have thought. So we're going to have to open this one first to see whether the frames are in here. And then we can start the install. So it's then obviously taken out all of the actual ply um, framework we actually have in the, uh, the window hole itself. And then obviously installing the frame and balancing that up first and then glassing second. So I reckon we should better get that done in a day, hopefully. Um, so we'll crack that open and I'll show you what's inside. Um, I feel like I'm in Egypt. But anyway, I'll let you know how we go. So talk about a bit of overkill. We've actually got the frames over here. Some frames have got to be put together over there. These foamy sort of blow up. Um, airbags. Yeah, airbags by the looks of it. So massive overkill. I mean, why the hell are they made it this big? I do not know. <sighs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> anyway, Darren, you got some explaining to do, buddy. Okay, after a long, long time, we currently have an opening. Okay, so we'll get the whole framework out. We currently have the base out already, so we had a two by four in there and a finishing piece, and that's all come out. We actually built this as well, but this window has actually come with the threshold itself. So do we use the window sill and set it on there, or do we use what we've actually built? I think we're gonna to have to use what we've already built, I think. And then obviously what we've got to do is obviously find the construction holes for the two before up the sides as well and get that removed across the top as well. And then hopefully every bloody finger crossed that this goes in without having to do any work on it. He says as he smacks into the other. So fingers crossed, we can get that out. The frame goes straight in with Packers and we'll be able to balance that in. Hopefully it should sit on that concrete ledge that we've made. Um, but I'm pretty sure, no, this has to have, this has to have the runners. We have no choice but to put it onto here because it runs on that, if I remember rightly. Hmm. Who does it? Hmm, I'll have to double check in a minute. So the frame itself is normally a square frame. You have the, the door jam on one side. So that will be one of the, that will be a top and a bottom, I would have thought, a top and a side. And that will be, oh yeah, yeah, so you've got two sides there. That's the two door jams. There you go, let you see the actual. So you've got two door jams, so that's the two ups. And that's the up and down, as far as I'm aware, if I remember rightly. Um, so we might be able to get it in without the actual seal itself, but in an ideal world, it should sit on the seal. So we'll have to double check what we're going to do with that. So let's get the sill out and get that in as well. And then you can measure from the top of the sill to the top of the actual uh, the wall itself up there to see whether we're actually going to leave in what we've done or take that out completely and finish it off. You all know my luck on the bar base build, build, don't you? You know the grinder's going to come out. You know that the circular saw's going to come out. You know the hammer and bolster and everything's going to come out. Everything crossed, don't forget, give me a like and subscribe below if you don't mind. See you soon. Okay, so we have the frame out, all the way through, all the way down, and all the way around. So, fingers crossed, we can actually get it in. So, we'll start by actually finding out how we can get, uh, let's get, the, let's get the, the sill in first and see if we can actually put the uprights in and see whether it gives us the height we need. Um, I think we'll probably have to build the four frame together anyway. See if the four frame goes in there um, with the silver doesn't, then we're gonna have to try and find a way around it. In an ideal world, the bottom is the runner anyway, and the runner lets the water out, but it's ne meant to let the water into the seal and the seal then runs out. But again, we've already built a concrete seal, so it will be a lot easier if we can use the seal we got there, but it would look better if we could use uh, the seal that comes with it. So let me put the frame together and show you what that looks like. Okay, so frame is built. It's a little pain in the ass. And black CT1. Damn, that gets everywhere. So anyway, it's been built. We just tried to see whether it would go on the thresh windowsill, percent threshold. Whether it would go, whether the windowsill would go on the threshold, and whether the height of that mixed with the door would enable it to go in. But we are a little bit wide on 
on this corner here. So we've actually got 108, it's 190 mil, 190 centimeters or 1900 mil. And down here, um, we're actually a little bit too wide. So we're gonna have to take the very edge off. The skirting board down here's been cut a little bit too long. And the very corner edge down here is the mortars hanging over the wall, just too much, we need to trim that back. Um, the rest of it up here opens up by about another uh, centimeter up here. So we've got another 10 mil to play with, but down here very tiny. So we're just gonna quickly nip that off with the grinder, dusty unfortunately, but get that nipped off the grinder so we can actually get the width in there and then we'll see where we can get the height, fingers crossed. Okay, right, what time are we at now? Half past one, we are bloody slow, you know. Let me double check before I start gassing, don't forget to give me that beautiful little thumbs up below. And some subscriptions would be greatly appreciated. I think we're at nine, I think last time I looked, we're at something like 925 or 926. So thanks for that, by the way. Anyway, so the threshold is in. We've had to pack up a little bit of wood in this corner here because the, th the concrete threshold um, is around about seven inches over there and it windles down to about five inches over here for some unknown reason. So as you can see, that concrete is pretty much in line with the main wall itself before the actual plaster. Whereas over here, I mean, look, we are literally back by at least an inch. So I've had to put that wood underneath, which we can trim back um, afterwards. Uh, but I wanted to get it in, get it nice and sealed and, uh, and screwed. And then we can actually decide what we're going to do with it. Bear in mind, we've still got to get a bit of flooring in here all the way along. Um, so that's going to be quite interesting how we go about doing that. Um, so anyway, that's, that's in. Um, the downside, obviously, from a construction screw point of view, we managed to get two in here, but this one's cracked the floor. So that's now not really binding at all. This one's in. We've got nothing really to fix in the middle, which is a pain in the backside. And we've got two reasonably large, long construction screws going all the way through into that. So it's fixed and it's siliconed and it's obviously got some packers underneath there as well. You can't really see under all the silicon and garbage. You see on that end there. Um, and we've got it as level as we can. It is slightly lower that side. So the trouble is we can't really pull it up anymore. Otherwise it's, it's gonna get to a point where it's gonna bind too much on this corner. Um, the frame's made, we put it in, it does fit. Um, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna find some silicon and we're gonna pump it down into this corner here to ensure we don't get any water going down and driving through. Um, and we're also gonna have to pack up this corner in here because as you can see, it's quite low in there. So I'm a bit concerned about that. But anyway, we're gonna do that corner and that one's exactly the same as well. So we have a little corner in there of emptiness. So we'll silicon all down in the corner there and make sure that when the window fits up against this wall, that we silicon all the way up. So that should be absolutely okay. So anyway, the threshold's gone in. It's not gonna look absolutely as, as gorgeous as it should do because it's already gonna be going on our, um, our little slope we already created. Got a little bit of rain coming down for some unknown reason. So we're gonna get that back in. We're gonna physically put that in for now. I don't think you silicon that down. You just fix it straight in as it is and then silicon the front. So that's what I'm intending to do with that. Um, and then we can um, get some fixings, construction screw wise, straight into the actual block walls. Um, I need to make some marks as well because there's a couple of construction screws already been put into here from before. So we just need to make sure we avoid those. As you can see, there's one down here, one here, uh, one there and one there. So I need to make a little mark on the wall to ensure I avoid those areas because otherwise you'll land up um, breaking through into the other side. Um, again, another one there, look. Another one there, so there's only two on that side. So we're gonna get that in straight away. Um, and then it is a case of hanging the doors on and then putting the glass in. So only three hours to go, so wish me luck. Okay, nearly four o'clock. Absolute ball like that's turned into. So they're in, hopefully we'll be able to get the glass in now and just get them sealed and then we can actually turn them all a bit properly later. Um, but anyway, the issues we had, um, Packer fell down into this corner here and packed it out, so we had a bit of a bubble. So had to let, yeah, by the time we actually screwed that side of screws that side, we worked out it had gone off level. So it was unscrewing all of that again, getting that done. Um, the packers, obviously we're gonna have to trim them off or get them pushed right in. Um, so we put them sideways, but in an ideal world, you want them, you want them lengthways really. Uh, but I wanted to put them in there so I could actually potentially remove them. Um, I think once we actually get some fixings into the top, which is okay, then we can pull those out anyway. So that would be fine. Um, but anyway, we're fixed all the way down this side, all the way down this side. We've not fixed the base um, into the track itself because you don't do that, so that's okay. Um, the door itself needs adjusting, um, but that will go on at another stage, obviously. That's also just this adjustment here. That's got to be done. Um, and then, obviously, these buys come right open. 
getting the screws into those hinges was bloody difficult. That's for sure. So anyway, they're in now. So we're going to go down and actually open up um, the box downstairs, and get the glass out, and then start fitting some windows. Handprints on the bloody walls. That's me. Look. Actually, no, that wasn't me. I didn't do that one up there. That's showing. I blame him. Anyway, let's get this bloody washed off the walls. So we don't have to paint it yet again. And we've got a quite a nice tight fit there as well. Look, so we've got about half an inch there, quarter of an inch around the top. Uh, and about a quarter of an inch here as well, which is quite nice. So yeah, not a bad job. Let's get that glass in and see what happens. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up below. Thank you. Look how different it looks already. Amazing. Looking at that big white ply sheet all that time. Very strange. So all the glass is in now. One of them was broken, as, as you know. So I'm now going to lift a couple of the panes in. See how it weight bears. I think should be right on the toe and heel, I would have thought. Looks okay. So, uh, yeah, so just making sure that hinge there is actually fine from a height on the floor. And then obviously gonna pack that side there up anyway. So put a packer in there. Trim all the, all the rubbers. All the rubbers don't seem to be trimmed for some unknown reason. So I've got to trim all the rubbers. It's a bit of a pain. Everything seems to be uh, needing some more attention for some unknown reason. But anyway, I'll get that trimmed now and then get this paint in. Okay, 20 past six. Light is still around us. We've got not one minute start by this time, so Barbados is getting lighter. Okay, so that was a bit of a that was a bit of a task. As you can see, they're in. Um, the actual aluminium beads on these, anyone that's anyone that's watched the videos before can see the problems we've had before. The aluminium beads on these windows are absolutely awful to put in. So we've managed to get this one all the way around, this one all the way around, but due to the time and lack of patience, these two can wait until Monday because I've literally lost it. Um, I think we're gonna end up putting a hammer through it. I have to carry on. But anyway, door is in. Okay. So we have some nice patio windows in. Look lovely. But bloody hell were they hard. Um, still got to finish them off, obviously. Still got to put the silicon all up the sides, finish down in the corners, um, silicon across the actual the beam itself underneath. Um, as you can see, the, 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 the rubbers aren't even being pushed because the, the internal rubbers aren't in. These aren't too bad, um, but the other ones need the internal rubbers, which are all in bags over there, and they're showing. So at the moment, you've got like a gap all the way down the window now trying to force the rubbers in all the way around that is a task in its own and obviously you need to clean them as well this one's a bit stiff oh, not too sure why and also we still need to drill the magnet at the top here as well to hold them open so again we'll get this um, base thing finished off here we've got to get a bit of wood in the wall there and then we can get this piece of wood all the way along get that finished off as well and then um, cut back the wood that we've actually put in as well. So, that is it, but bloody, I've got a task. Showing how tough was that, one to 10. <laughs> it was hard, wasn't it? Wow. So anyway, but they shut nice, double locks. Very, very nice. Look, they look good, but wow, that was tough. And the toe and heel process hasn't also lifted the doors as much as we wanted it to as well. So we're probably gonna to have to undo the hinges on this one here and lift both doors up, see if that sorts it. If not, undo the three hinges here and up, uplift this door as well. We've got perfect height here. The rubber itself up here, as you can see, is overlapping the top frame by about half a, half a centimeter, quarter of an inch, absolutely perfect. Then you come down here and it drops even though we've toe and heeled it really hard. Um, the rubber's not even covering here, look. So, um, yeah, what we'll have to do on Monday is um, undo the three hinges and lift the doors to see whether that actually counteracts the issue we're having there. Um, I mean, they look fine, you wouldn't even know, but obviously, it's, um, eventually what will happen is this door here, um, as when it settles in, will start catching. I mean, it's not catching, it's miles away at the moment, so it's absolutely fine. And uh, hand prints everywhere, look. Hand prints. And mainly that was me. 
can't even blame Sherman, that was me. So, um, <laughs> um, yeah, so that's, that's obviously that for the door. The two foot window in the bathroom to do as well, which we'll do that Monday after we finish this one off. And then we've got the eight foot by six foot one to go in there as well. Again, they're quite straightforward, they're frames in. Uh, it's just literally making sure they're balanced, screwing them into the wall and fitting the glass. Whereas these ones, a lot of toe and he healing, um, a lot of setting up the matches, um, outer frame as well as um, base frame and then the three doors as well. So quite a, quite a hard install. I think we can get the other two windows done on Monday in one lump. So uh, that's what my thing we'll be stuck in here too. But anyway, thanks for watching. Um, give us a thumbs up and some comments if you don't mind. Um, and uh, we'll get these finished off and we'll update the filming on Monday. Have a great weekend and I'll see you soon.